Hi and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. Today we are going to work some more on plants. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we begin today's episode, I would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, it really means a lot. Let's get cracking with today's video. In the previous episode, we created integration for the LiliGo TTGo high growth sensor, and this integration allowed us to pull data from this sensor board inside our Home Assistant. And this is the data we receive from that sensor. But Home Assistant also has something called Plant Monitor. Plant Component lets you merge all the data from the plant sensor, such as moisture, conductivity, light intensity, temperature, and battery level, into a single UI element. Well, that's according to the Home Assistant documentation. The great thing about it that it also allows you to set the minimum and maximum values for each measurement, and it will change its state depending on the problem or if the value is within those limits or not. One thing that is also great about this is that not just that it will trigger based on the minimum maximum temperature or uh, conductivity, meaning the humidity of the soil, but there is also something called minimum brightness. And minimum brightness is not really easy sensor to do because, yeah, there is a night time where there is a minimum brightness and you do not want to get alerted based on the night. What it does, it takes an average value across several days and then it triggers the minimum brightness alert if there wasn't enough brightness in the course of a day by looking at the comparison to other periods. So yeah, very nice and handy feature. How do we do that? Let's go to Visual Studio Code. And here in the Visual Studio code, you can see the code that we used last time to pull data from the MQTT sensor. And today we're going to create a new integration that has to go inside your configuration YAML file that will be used to match this data here with the data that is expected for the plant monitor integration. So let's get cracking. This has to go inside your configuration YAML file since I'm doing this on my live system or my production system, for me, each integration is in its own individual file. Let's create a new file. Or for you, let's add this inside your configuration YAML file. And you can just now follow my steps to create plant monitor sensor. Let me give this a name. Plant Monitor Integration. Next thing I'll do is I'll name this file. Okay. So let's get cracking. Plant. Next thing that we want to do is we want to give this plant monitor a name. It can match the name of your uh, plant sensor, but it can also be the name of the plant itself. So let's, for example, call this Daisy. Because, yeah, why not? Next thing is to define all the sensor our plant monitor will use. And there are a couple of sensors that we can use. Overall, five sensors. First one will be moisture. Here we have to paste the name of this sensor. This will be a soil. Let's go to developer tools. And look for the soil. So the full name is sensor.plant underscore soil underscore one. Let me copy that and we'll paste it here. Let me quickly add all the other sensors for now names and we will copy the entity names a little bit later. Battery is 
next sensor. After that, we have temperature, conductivity, brightness, and this is all we need for this sensor, or these are all the sensors inside sensor that we need to specify. So let's start adding entities here. Let's go to developer tools. There is moisture and conductivity. Moisture is looking at the humidity inside the soil and conductivity is looking for the fertilizers inside the soil itself. And this is it. We have now matched all the sensors with all the entities from our plant MQTT integration. But this is not it for this sensor or for plant monitor integration. Next, we will define some thresholds. We will define minimum and maximum moisture. For minimum moisture, let's put here 20. Max moisture will be, let's say, 60. Min battery. Since our sensor is using battery, let's say it will be 20%. Min conductivity will be, let's say, 150. And let's say that minimum temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. As I said, there is also option for minimum brightness. Let's add that one too. And let's specify that this is 1000 looks. And something that you can use with the minimum brightness is option check days. This is how many days the sensor will look for some average value or the minimum brightness value. Default value is 3, let's put here 4. And let's press save. Next thing for us is to check our configuration. And if everything is ok, we will restart our home assistant. Let's go to configuration, server control, check configuration. And let's restart our server. I really am impressed on how this board works. I've been playing with it for a couple of weeks now. I just also heads up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there should be a new firmware for the board very soon. And expanding the functionality of this board with the plant monitor integration will really improve your plant's life. I know that it helped me a lot with my plants. For example, I have three pots sitting on the almost the same spot. They contain almost the same amount of uh, soil and same plants. And it's funny that I water them same, but when I tested the sensor in each individual uh, pot, I noticed that the water was ranging from below 20% to over 75%. To me, the plants looked same, Although I did see some deterioration on leaves on one of the plants and that plant did have too much moisture. So by using this board together with this plant monitor integration, you can really improve your life of the plants both inside your home and outside of your house. Don't forget that if you put this sensor outside, you definitely need to print a case for it and also take into account that you have to provide a hole for the charging and also you have to provide hole for the lux sensor there is a 3d case on the github page of the sensor so if you want you can use that one and that one is using the magnetic charging heads so you do not have to take the sensor out of the box if you want to recharge the sensor itself okay we are still waiting for some of the components to finish loading and here we go our home assistant is back online completely. 
let's go to overview let's go to plants and let's try and add this new plant monitor integration sensor as you can see it pulled the data automatically this was filled in let's give it a name and let's press save you can probably agree that having this type of visualization of the sensor is much better than this one although here we do have some extra values for example you can check when that was the last time the sensor responded and you can use this data also in automations to warn you if for example there is some kind of issue and the sensor doesn't respond in let's say three hours also here you have information on the firmware version which of course is not necessary for day-to-day -day operation but yeah it's just a nice add-on okay so let's check our values and what we get from this plant monitor integration if we click on this icon which represents the humidity of the soil we can see the graph on how the soil was changing so this is the information about the soil this one was the calibration when i calibrated the sensor so as you can see it went over 100 percent next thing we have information about the temperature what this peak can signal you is that this sensor is probably somewhere where the sun is hitting it directly we have information about the looks you can see the period of the night and then the morning and direct sunlight this is the information about the fertilizer or the minerals inside soil and here we have the status of our battery this was the period when i recharged my battery and this is it you can now of course use this to trigger various automations let's go to developer tools let's see what information we can get here as you can see you immediately get information if there is a problem or not and our problems are moisture high conductivity low meaning that there is not enough fertilizer in the soil and you can base of course your automations on the status of this problem and this is it for this home assistant how-to i really do hope that you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please give me a thumbs up it means a lot to me and it also helps the channel to grow if you have any kind of a comment or a question or idea you can always find me on the discord server but you are also free to leave the comment down in the comment section if you still haven't subscribed please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates and I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.